I've never been in a position where I was provided for, if that makes sense, right? Like, it would be nice to like not worry about that for a change, which is controversial in today's world, but I don't care. I think that would be nice. And just to feel protected, to me, that's super important. Introducing The Vixen Voice, a podcast for ambitious women entrepreneurs ready to move into their feminine essence, live their truth, and unlock their full potential. I'm your host, April Roberts, and each week I'll be interviewing inspiring women who decided to take a leap of faith to pursue their dream. Women who believe that they were born for something bigger. Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Vixen Voice. Today is a special episode of Girl Chat. And today chatting with me, I have Laura Richards, the Amazon number one new release author of There is Hope, 52 Keys to Healing After Divorce, and the host of the global podcast, That's Where I'm At. So welcome, Laura. Hi, thanks for having me. And I also have, you probably know her already, Shelly Vernon, who is my co-facilitator of the Vixen Masterminds and also the founder. Here's what she does for her real job. Just kidding. <laughs> the founder. <laughs> <laughs> the founder of Milestone Development and Management, where she helps your company become more efficient from the top down. So I love it. So Shelly and I do the masterminds together because I prefer to work one on one with the entrepreneur. And she's really great with the entrepreneur and with the team. She did this work at a very high level in Dow, along with project management and solving high level problems. So she really is kind of a jack of all trades. So she kind of brings the corporate training in and I bring the entrepreneurial spirit. So when you hear us laughing, we've been having a good darn time. Hopefully we can replicate some of the jokes <laughs> during this yes. episode. Uh, but you know, you, you definitely want to keep listening because today we are chatting about dating. And so I'm super excited Laura could come. I actually was spurred to do this episode because she was posting memes that were cracking me up about dating. And I thought, you know, we've talked about having kids. Let's talk about dating. Let's like go the opposite way, which here's a funny thing. Do you know the first time in my life that I felt old, quote unquote, because I don't feel old. I mean, if you've listened, I plan to live to 124. So at 47, you know, I'm a third of the way through my life. So I'm good. I'm not even midlife. But that being said, the first time I felt old was I was reading this article and, you know, I, I don't know what magazine it was in, but you know how they'll do like in your 20s, wear this, in your 30s, in your 40s, like the different decades. So I had just turned 40 or I was 39 about to turn 40 and it was about health. And so literally for in your 40s, it said, oh, watch out for the beginning of menopause, dot, dot, dot. But don't forget your birth control because you can still become pregnant. And I was just like, oh, oh my oh. gosh. <laughs> oh, gosh. I do know somebody who um, had a baby at 48. Yeah, I had a client so. who had a baby. Look, she was a <laughs> neurologist and she thought she had cancer. And she goes in and they're like, "Um, your tumor has a heart. You're not, you don't have cancer. You're pregnant. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> surprise. Yeah. That is not a Woo. surprise I want. No. <laughs> yeah. But I remember that first time I was like, Oh, menopause is coming. Like, I just, it was, I don't think it's anything you think about until it's facing you. No. And I don't think as women, we talk about it enough, right? So, yeah, you know, right. very much something I feel I'm perimenopausal now. So I've been doing a lot of reading about hormones and diet. I don't take any form mm -hmm. of medication. So really trying to balance that. So that's a fun way to start yeah. talking about dating, right? How do you go date <laughs> when you're going into menopause? I mean... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I have I have had conversations with my OBGYN, though, if we're talking about this. I have because I've said, look, I'm not having sex right now. But when I do, what do I do? <laughs> 
he goes, well, we can check you to see if you even are, you know, ovulating anymore. And, and then, of course, you have to think about STIs. And I'm like, why am I having this conversation? Oh but gosh. at 56 and divorce, I got to think about, it, you know, so, so it was just like, I was just like, what do I do? <laughs> it was really funny. So he said he would check my hormones to see if I'm ovulating. I'm like, okay, great. This is great. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> You're like, thanks so much. So just to put weird. it in okay. context, no, Laura was married for 33 years. So this is exactly what we're talking about. Like, how do we navigate this at this point? Right. And Shelly, hop right in there. I mean, obviously, we're not being shy. So listen, I'm thinking, I, so I'll, I turned 50 this year. And I'm thinking, if you're on a date and you have a hot flash, because that is a very real thing. You know, you want to run out of your clothes. <laughs> it might send the wrong message. Right. You're just like, oh, you make me so hot. <laughs> Listen, I keep these little fans like everywhere so I can just. Yes. Be like... <laughs> yes. Yes. You have to act like a Southern lady. Oh, yes. there you go. Yes, yes, yes. That's hilarious. hilarious. I have not experienced hot flashes yet, knock on wood. I, I'm not really convinced I'm there. It's just that I have a very, very regular cycle. And this last time, like it showed up 23 days late. So like at first it didn't come. I was like, well, that's it. I'm in the last and then it shows up like 23 <laughs> days you, late. You wish. <laughs> I you wish I mean, it was that easy. <laughs> I mean, I, I will say, since we're having that conversation, yeah. it is nice to not have that occur, right? Like two years. And then, but the crazy thing is, is it could be gone for two years. And then the next thing you're like, wait a minute, what? I don't, I'm not prepared for this. It's back. What? Well, yeah. oh, I was going to say, gosh. you know, if, if your cycle's gone, that's one less thing you have to worry about on a date, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. But then it just comes back magically. Only one oh. time. It'll probably be gone for two more years, which, you know, hey, I'm fine with that. But like that surprise coming in, they're like, whoa, I'm not accustomed to this anymore. Oh, my gosh. That's crazy. OK, I'm going to flip us to dating. <laughs> I'm sure we'll come back here. Okay. But I warned yeah, everyone at could. the beginning, you're in for a ride today. So, you know, <laughs> flag this episode. And when you need a good laugh, when you're having one of those days, listen to us on your way home from work. All right. We'll give you a hoot. So really, what I'd love to know is, one, if you could give us like a quick synopsis of, you know, I've been divorced for X number of years, or I was married multiple times, and just kind of put in context your dating scenario. So we'll start there. And then what I'd love to hear is like, kind of how do you think about dating? You know, what's your perception of it? I was sharing that I have a girlfriend who's 43 and she's like, yep, I'm done. Not dating anymore. I'm just not going to be with anyone, which is obviously one extreme, right? And I'm like, I can't comprehend that. And Laura's like, huh, that's not a bad idea. So I right? can. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, I am working on myself. So <laughs> I'm trying not to be that way. I definitely don't hate men. I really do love men. But I was uh, with my ex for we were married 32 years, we were together 33. And so I was uh, 23. When um, we got married, and I didn't really date a super lot before that, you know, we met in college and, and all that. And so I felt oh, God, that was so young, right? I didn't even have a fully functioning brain, which explains a lot of stuff that happened after but it's weird now to be in this situation. And so my some of my friends are like, it's an adventure. Do this and just go out on dates. And I'm like, it doesn't sound like an adventure to me. It sounds like a lot of work. And I would rather be at home. And that so I totally get it with your friend. I'm like, I'm almost 57. I'm like, no, when you love yourself, and that's what I've been working on, when you love yourself enough, you're not going to settle. And so I don't want to say like, nobody's good enough. I'm just saying when you love yourself enough, you're not going to settle. And I don't think I, I'm not ready to weed through the muck to get to uh, somebody good. I'm not there yet. But I have been looking, I've been window shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Eye candy is Dip not a bad toe. thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. So Shelly, how about you? I've been divorced now for, oh gosh, let's see. I, I don't even think about it anymore. I just lose track. It's probably been 13, 14 years. I don't know. Maybe even 15. I don't, I don't even, I let that go. Right. 
But then after that, I was in a relationship for about 12 years. I have been single now for about three. I love men. And so I'm not giving up. I am though old fashioned. So I will say that I don't want to go out searching or looking. I think that, you know, I have that, I guess, nostalgic thing, like he's just going to see me and he's going to be courageous enough to walk over and speak to me. Right. Because I, I do not desire a man who lacks courage or someone that doesn't know what they like, even visually. Right. So I'm kind of old fashioned. I more than likely will not approach a man. Although I, I you, this, I have to tell you, I, I feel the same way. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I feel the same way because I felt very not taken care of in my marriage for so long. And so I have told my therapist, I've told friends, I'm like, I know I am brave enough to ask a man out, but I want to be asked on a date. I don't think that's too much to ask. And I am one of those and call it old fashioned or whatever you want to call it, Shelly. I'm the same way. You know, I feel like I would love to meet somebody organically out at a bar. Well, I don't even know if at a bar. I'm not going to a bar, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. In the pro, on the produce aisle. Somewhere. I don't know. Yeah. In my bed, I'm watching Netflix with my cat. Come find me. <laughs> Laura, when I'm in Vegas, we're going to a bar just for fun. Oh, just a God, local okay. one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I'm along the same lines. And Shelly, I'm just going to challenge you about you not approaching a man, but we'll see if we're going to have that conversation during this call. But no, I mean, I'm old fashioned too. And, you know, what I say is, well, so for me, I've been divorced since 2009. So we're for a long time. And I had a series of significant, well, a series of dating. And I, you know, I've had like, two other significant relationships, I would say in my adult life. But like, for me, since 2017, I just went from one relationship to another, literally, when I was like, Okay, I'm ready to date, how do I do this? Like someone just showed up or someone I knew, like elevated to that level. And so yeah, I'm taking time now to like, discover me, I don't want I mean, I wouldn't say no, some like good looking guy wanted me to take me to dinner or conversation for me is really important. So you know, if we had a nice repertoire, like, I'm not gonna say no, but you know, I'm kind of like, I'm taking this time to get recentered in me to get closer to God, like God is the masculine energy in my life right now, you know, always had that and really enjoying my girlfriends. Like I really just have amazing girlfriends that like, you know, we tell each other I love you at the end of the phone call, like we really genuinely like care about each other. And I feel like, you know, when I was in all those relationships, yeah, you have girlfriends and you have friends, but by the time you juggle work, a relationship, all these other things, you don't really have a ton of time for friends. At least I didn't running a business. And so I'm really loving this time where I can focus on my friends. But I'd add a little caveat to y'all waiting for the guy. I learned this in college because my college boyfriend ended up asking me out because we were at something and we both had other dates and we knew each other. And my favorite song came on. I was like, oh my gosh, do you want to dance? Like just out of excitement. Like I didn't mean to ask him to dance. He was just next to me and a friend of mine. And then that gave him the courage to ask me out. And he'd been wanting to for a year, right? So what it taught me was you got to give them a signal. Like you've got to flirt. You've got to let them know the door's open. It doesn't have to be like in their face, but it just has to be something because, you know, especially in today's world, look at men are nervous about this situation. You have to... I don't know. I love flirting. So a little flirting doesn't hurt, right? Like even if it's, you know, at the bar at the airport or someone you might actually date, like it's, it's always great to have a good conversation. I think I flirt and I'm, I'm fairly good at it. I just don't see myself like being the one to initiate asking a gentleman out. Yeah, no, that one. Me neither. What I like to say is I'm Again, working on myself like Laura and enjoying this phase of my life, but I'm preparing to be discovered. I'm not finding them. Like yes. they're going to discover yes. me. Right. <laughs> yes. You know, I might have to help that situation along, but I am not the one searching and I am not the one asking. So I think we're kind of all on the same page when it comes to that. And I don't know if it's our generation or just like what we've learned as we've gotten older, because I mean, I don't know. I don't think I've ever asked a guy out. Have y'all? 
Well, you've been married forever, Laura. Never mind. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, but- <laughs> I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think even before that. I don't think I did, but I was introduced to somebody and we were doing some walking at the park. We would just meet up at the park and I was kind of flirting and also making my intention clear like, oh, I'd really like to see you another time and making my intention clear because like you said, guys want to know. I'm not going to ha- make them guess. I don't want that. That's not my style. You know, I don't want to play games, but just making it like, oh, I'd love to see you another time. And him just being like, oh, yeah, I'm at the park every Thursday or whatever. And I'm like, seriously, like <laughs> you're not <laughs> you're not getting it. And so I would just keep trying. And yes, people could say that I could have asked him out or something. No, I didn't want to. I didn't want to because I just said something. That's what I'm doing. I want to be asked out. I was not taken care of for a long time. So when friends are like, because I've been divorced about a year and a half. And some people say, that's not very long. And I say, well, I was, I was, I felt like I was not married. I wasn't divorced, but I was really sad and lonely for a long time. And so, you know, it doesn't seem like a year and a half. And, uh, you know, he was off doing other stuff. So, you know, (laughs) it's my turn. (laughs) But in a good way. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. That's so funny. I totally feel you. So Shelly, what are your thoughts or feelings? I feel the same. I'm not shy by any means, but I am resolute that about certain things, right? Like I'm I'm not going to ask you out. I'm I'm going to give you that opportunity. I'm like Laura, I'm going to make sure that you understand like this is where I am or this is where I am not. And and not in a mean way, just, you know, kind of like, hey, yeah, let's like, like you said, like, yeah, let's, let's go out. I'd love to spend more time with you or what have you, or like, oh, I really enjoy our time together. You're so funny. You know, now I, I have learned that men like to be funny. They want to know that they can make you laugh. Right. And so April knows me very well and she knows I'm very reserved, but when I'm out, if I'm out, then I, I will loosen up and allow you to know like, hey, you're really funny. I'm really enjoying my time with you and conversation is very important to me. We do need to be able to converse together and on serious topics as well as, you know, we can laugh and be funny. And April knows I'm a goofball. So he needs to understand that I may say some goofy stuff. To be as intelligent as I am, I may say some really off the wall stuff. (laughs) Yeah. You got to have that balance, right? (laughs) You got to have that balance. I was telling a friend about Well, I don't know, something. I forget what we were talking about, but I said, I'm not willing to compromise that thing, whatever it was. And she says, well, you know, you were married. Marriage is about compromise. I go, yeah, I compromised a lot. So I think I'm like, that's why I want to be careful with myself and be like, am I ready? Am I not ready? I feel like I am. I've done so much work on my Lord. I've done so much work, you know? And so I feel like I am ready but I'm not willing, but I do get like resolute. Like you said, you know, like, it's like, no, this is like, these are deal breakers. I'm not compromising in these areas. I'm funny and goofy. And if you don't like it, well, I don't know. Then you don't like, then you're not going to like me because I'm very serious and I'm also very goofy. Well, I think that's just having standards and wanting to have the ability to be yourself, which is normal. And, you know, when y'all talked about you want to be asked out, I've always had that theory my whole life because there is never a boring day with me. And if that man can't ask me out, he probably can't hang on for the ride, right? So, like, (laughs) am I right, Shelly? She is absolutely correct. (laughs) I love that. Oh So I've kind of always known that about myself, but it's so funny. So I have a question. How uh, do you think you have game? I'll tell you where this is coming from. I had friends okay. tell me. I had friends tell me I was. I a, a, oh, tell us about your game. I, I want to hear it. I, okay, but I, but what are you saying is game? Because I don't even know. <laughs> I'll tell you the story that spurred this in my head. So one of the relationships I had three since 2017, and the middle one was with a much younger man, 16 years younger for like a year. So like I met him and then my friend asked him to meet us out that night. Like we met him, you you know, we just ran into him out and about and like we were out of town, invited him to meet us for drinks. And so we're there and he comes and he's sitting next to me and then he's like, okay, I'm going to go get a drink. I'm like, okay, I'll be here. And then my friends are like, who were two guys? They were like, you have zero game. 
go talk to him. He's really good looking and some other woman's going to pick him up at the bar. And they like pushed me <laughs> to go to the bar. And then we dated for oh, a year funny. after that. So, I mean, I'm just like, cool, I'll be here. I'll see you when you get back with your drink. So <laughs> they're like, you have zero game. <laughs> like, get up there. Okay. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> so, Shelly, tell us about your game. Well, I can't reveal it because, you know. There no, might be you don't reveal it. There might be some unsuspecting man <laughs> when watching. The, when the next um, man is Google stalking you, he's going to watch this episode. Yeah, well, we already ruined it starting off with menopause. So, you know, well, you might as exactly. well. Yeah. There is exactly. that. I, I would say a part of my game is my charm. I am very charismatic if that's okay to say about yourself. And just from feedback that I have gotten, I, I want to make sure that I say this correctly. The conversation that I will have with you is just mentally stimulating that some men, I tend to attract men that are sapiosexual. I don't know if you know that term. And so, so sapiosexual is a person who is stimulated by intelligence. I knew that word. We I are, looked it up recently. <laughs> we are getting, because I heard it. <laughs> did you? We are getting into some dirty talk here. Keep going, Shelly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so because of that, my wit, which I can combine the intellect with, you know, some of my cornball stuff and they find it very witty and yeah. that's endearing to them. And so that's a part of my game. I'll, I'll share that. So are you going to coach me on my game, Shelly? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just like you coached me on mine when you were like, turn on some music, shake your butt and then go. <laughs> yeah. Oh do not God. text him until you have a smile on your face. I mean, I'm joking. I, 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 I laugh about that story because I'm sure I was hesitant because, you know, here's this kid 16 years younger than me and i'm like what do i do with this right like um because i am joking when i am with someone i i am good to turn it i can turn it on and like you you know as my friend told me we were at the vixen mastermind remember her husband texted something and she said this i said what are you doing you should have said this and she goes that's why men will do anything for you april and i'm like but it's just like they just want to be seen they want you to flirt with them like they want to have fun they want like our fun sassy side they don't want us to be like you know i mean i actually watched this interview with andrew tate as controversial as he can be but he was chatting about like you know it turns me off when i go on a date with a woman and she's telling me about all the things she's done and everything she's seen and how accomplished she is and how smart she is. And one thing that stuck with me is he was like, I want to be her window to the world. Like I want to be her guide. So the man wants to feel that they bring something to the table that they can introduce you to something new. Right. So I thought that was very interesting to think about because in today's world where everyone's like, I've done this and I've done this and I'm an independent woman, hear me roar, like you're probably shooting yourself in the foot if you're on a date, right? So I do understand, I, I understand men's egos very well. I have tons of male friends. So like, I understand, you know, how they think and what they do. And um, just studying men and women and what's important to them, which is important to humanity, not just dating, but understanding how people operate is incredibly important. So um, yeah, but I'll Treating take your each other with respect, right? Treating each other with respect. And I, th I think at this age, I feel like I have a whole life. And I want someone who has a whole life and for us to come together to then show each other the world kind of thing. Maybe I like something different that they, they like. And so that's what I am envisioning this half of my life to be. And okay, so I, we we're talking about game. And I think I am good about like kind of flirting and kind of like, I am truly interested in what people have to say and things like that. Maybe I'm touching an arm or something that I don't realize I'm doing. Or yes, whatever. the so touch is important. You have to let them know, like just that little brush of hand. Yes, I know. But look, I don't know my own strength. I don't know my own strength. Okay? Because, <laughs> because I was out with some friends and my friend texted me later and she goes, wow, you were really flirting with him. And I said, oh my gosh, I was, I feel so bad because he's married. And I said, 
well, I was not flirting with him. I am so sorry. I was genuinely interested in what he had to say. Oh my gosh, I feel like crap. You know, I really did because that was a trigger for me because I had infidelity issues in my marriage. And so I was like, oh my gosh, no. And so without knowing my own strength, apparently I have game. You know what I'm saying? Because they thought I was like flirting and, but I was just genuinely interested in what he had to say. So I got to learn how to get my powers for good, not evil. I love it. <laughs> well, that's an interesting topic though, because I was always in male dominated industries, law and finance. So most of my friends were men and, you know, we'd win these trips in the financial industry or whatever. And so I always made sure to chat with their wife because I wanted them to know like, hey, you know, I mean, I wanted them to be like, oh, April's cool. Not just like, who's this woman hanging out with my husband all the time. So I was always like very cautious of those borders. And then and and then even at this point in life, you know, I always thought, well, guys just come to you and talk to you about things. But Sometimes that can border on emotional cheating in a way, right? You have to like really be careful. So I've definitely, I think I was naive when I was younger, like I was conscious of it. And I tried to make sure, you know, the boundaries were like strict and, and good. But yeah, as I've gotten older, I'm like, gosh, well, when your husband's talking to me about this, he really should be talking to you about that because you're colleagues, right? And so you think it's just your colleague talking to you, but it really depends on the full context. Text. So like being aware of that. Yeah. I mean, we had uh, emotional cheating issues in our marriage. And so I am very aware. And so that's why I was like, okay, I guess I'm good at flirting. I don't know, but I didn't mean to. And it really triggered me. So at least I know that I can do it. And so if I were to talk to somebody, I, if I was interested, I know that I could, I know how to use my body language and to touch and, and things like that. But it's just not something I'm willing to do right now. I'm not actively <laughs> wanting to do a lot of. Oh my gosh, I've deleted every app. I've reinstalled every app. It's, it's just a jungle out there. And I don't know if I'm willing to go through the jungle right now. Yeah, I don't know about apps. I told you, I've been like, I, it was literally yeah, like, I was like, I okay, know. I'm ready to date. And like a week later, I ran into someone I know, well, I'd known virtually for years. And we'd never met in person. And we met in person. And we had great chemistry. So like, I never even went on an app. So I wouldn't even know how to start like, dating, like I said, they usually just like show up. I'm like, okay, cool. But wow. I also think Okay, so maybe I need to announce that. <laughs> I'm ready to date yes, and see if same. it shows up. That's what <laughs> I was gonna say. I think it's the energy you put out because I haven't been yeah, putting that sure. energy out because I noticed, you know, prior to that string of serious relationships, when I was on apps, I noticed Every time I'd go on an app, I'd meet someone in the wild, I call it, like at a bar or something, because oh, I was younger and yeah. I was out and about. And it was like the moment I went on an app, I rarely met people on apps, but I would meet someone in real life. So I do think it's like that energy, the vibe you're putting out. And yeah, for sure. So Shelly, what are you thinking? I see that devious look <laughs> on your face. I want to ask how you two feel about this new term ghosting. Cause I had a conversation with one of my children. So I have five and um, they're all older. And he made a comment about, well, something about ghosting. And I said, hmm. and he said, well, I've been ghosted before too. And so then we had this deeper conversation about the whole concept of ghosting. Cause I don't understand it. I think it lacks courage. And oh, I think 100%. it's yeah. rude. For sure. Oh Yeah. For sure. And I've been I've been told I was on an app recently and he said this one guy said to me that, you know, you must not be very serious because here's my phone number. Let's talk outside the app. Well, that's a, that's usually a scam. And I'm like, no, I'm just, you know, just starting out. I'd like to chat inside the app. Oh, you must not be serious. You know, it's almost a tacky. Right. And so I have stopped talking to him and what is considered ghosting. But what am I going to say? What do you say to that? When someone's attacking you, I'm like, I'm done having this conversation with yeah, you. Yeah, that's toxic. But I do really think it's, I really do think it's very rude. And it's that, so that speaks to those manners, right? And also to that, like a high level person that I would want to be with. I'm not going to be with somebody like that. Like you can never return my text. I'm not saying you have to be right on it, right? But when they just completely stop, it, it's weird. And I have had conversations with friends where I say, yeah, we say hi to each other in the app and then that's it. Or we have a couple of back and forth and then that's it. And it's like, what's happening here? 
yeah, it's very strange. Rather than saying, oh, I'm not interested or never mind, or I don't know. I, I don't know. Well, I don't know how you're supposed to do it. <laughs> it's all, I'm all, it's all new to me. <laughs> so I have questions. Do y'all have boundaries? Like Shelly, I know you meet a lot of men through your no work. Like, no is there, I don't know. <laughs> no, what are boundaries? What kind of a question is that? No boundaries. I no don't have no boundaries. No. Do whatever you want. <laughs> But like, are there what do you any mean by that, April? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Are there any boundaries around dating for you? Like anywhere, you know, because it's weird in today's world. Like in the past, you went to an office and you worked with people and like, I didn't want to date someone I worked with. I mean, I kind of did one summer. Oh, um, okay. But yeah. like, you know, it, it, it wasn't super serious, but I just always... You know, I had that and then I dated someone that lived in my building in law school. And then when we broke up like that, like every time he came home, I could hear and it would get on my nerves. So I was like, yeah. not doing yeah. this again. I can imagine. Never dating right. anyone in my building ever again, right? Like you're forced to see them. So gosh, that was a whole nother lifetime ago, right? <laughs> That's so funny when you think back <laughs> to that stuff. Yeah. It, I mean, it really, yeah, I think about like, Maybe friends or something. I mean, my ex was my friend before we got together. But I don't know. I just think about that. I think about maybe the connections and the relationships. So if I, if I was a, thinking about dating a friend, I'd think about, well, I see him socially with other people. And if I dated him, then what would happen? I mean, if we didn't work out or whatever, or something bad happened, not just that we didn't work out, but what if something really negative happened, right? And we had a bad breakup or whatever. And so I think that would probably be my boundaries. I'd rather go with a new person. I mean, if somebody maybe that's not super close to me introduces me and I feel like I trust them, then that's okay. But I think in my close inner circle, I think it would be a little harder. I feel the same. I think someone in my close inner circle, I would be too concerned about losing that friendship. So I, I, I wouldn't, that would be a boundary for me. And then definitely no one that any of my girlfriends have ever dated. Like a, that's a, that's a hard no for me. <laughs> yeah. A good idea. Yeah, it's better not to do that. Um, well, what's interesting is, I mean, Charlie, as you know, my ex-boyfriend was someone very close to me. We dated and then, you know, we, we've we turned it. I mean, he's still one of my best friends, like even though we're not dating, but nothing terrible happened. Just, you know, something came up that I was like, okay, well, I guess this isn't, you know, forever. It was just a, like a, we were missing each other on one topic that was important to me. <laughs> so that's the best way I can say it and, and honor his privacy. But what I did, what that relationship taught me that when I was younger, I used the term younger loosely, even like up to like two years ago, three years ago. Like, I mean, prior to that, I mean, I think, you know, one, in, good conversations important to me, but physical attraction was very high on my list for dating. And, you know, my love language is physical touch and quality time, like very high and the other two are way down here, right? But with him, I learned the importance of compatibility because our lifestyles were so similar. We didn't live in the same state. We both traveled a lot, had similar work, you know, I mean, and we just had so much fun together. So I'm glad we were able to stay friends. Whereas then after that, I, I went back to an ex that, you know, there was a lot of physical attraction. And I was like, okay, we got nothing else. Like what? Like we can't even agree on like where to go. Right. You know, and it's like, it's like that one that I, I joke that I'm like a moth to a flame with this particular person. I'm like, oh my God, this is the third time. How are we back here again? And it's nothing terrible. <laughs> I mean, nothing bad. At, and like, seriously, my family will be like, really, you're dating him again? And my friends too. And they're just like, I don't want to talk about it. But I mean, this time around, when I tried it out with him again, or he reached out to me, I saw like that lacking compatibility just wasn't doable for me. Whereas in the past, I don't 
you know, I don't know if I was very naive or romantic about that or if it was lust. I mean, I don't know. But, you know, this time around, I was like, wow, I had that experience where I did date someone close to me and we were very like we were best friends and dating. You know, we weren't best friends prior to dating. So that was different. And, you know, I miss that. Like, I, I, I miss that ability to laugh and just hang out all the time and we're cool together. Right. So that's something that came up for me that is now important to me at this age that, you know, even I'd say three years ago, I didn't value that much. I didn't think compatibility was that important. Really? I mean, I just don't want to, you know, I don't want to have a boring life. And so it's important, you know, the, the good conversations, we don't have to be serious all the time, but I love when I'm with friends and that we just talk about everything and we laugh about stuff. And we also talk about serious things and we talk about our kids and whatever old age and the, like all the stuff we were talking about earlier, you know, I mean, when we just start talking about things and because at this age, I feel like we start talking about like, are your parents still alive? Uh, how is your sciatica? You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I just want to, I just want to have conversation because it does feel weird. You know, like you were saying, it's like, if we're not old, but we're not young. We're kind of in that in between, right. You know, and, and so it's, we have different priorities. At least I do. I'm, I'm not looking for someone to have kids with, Obviously, you know, I'm 56. I'm not looking to, with, you know, for a baby daddy in any way. My kids are grown. So I want to have a fun life and I want to have conversations with people. So, yeah, that to me will come, I think, on a date really quickly. What? How do you keep the conversation going back and forth? Not just like, what's your favorite color or what do you like? Do you like to go to the movies? You know, the other stuff, the stuff that you can sustain because, Oh, yeah, looks are great. I yes, of course, I want someone I'm attracted to. But that's not always going to last. Oh, yeah, no, I agree. Conversations top. But I think I, I meant more in like things we enjoy doing, right? Like, you oh, know, yeah, just yeah. having right. And just kind of being on the same page about how you want to live your life. I don't know, I guess it's more lifestyle. And, you know, yes. things like that. But yeah, no, for that me, makes sense. For me, conversation super important. If we can't have, I like, I'll never forget in college, I, I had a crush on the kicker of our football team. And I was like, Oh, my gosh, he's so good looking. Like, he's like the best looking guy. And so it turns out one of my friends, it was his roommate. And I was like, okay, can you set, like introduce me? Like, I, you know, I, mean, I didn't ask him out, but I got introduced, right? And then, you know, we seemed to hit it off, but my friend was there and I was very close to my, you know, my friend and I had studied in London together. So we were like, my friend and I were super compatible. You know, the now me says, why didn't you date the freaking friend? Like, why'd you have to go for the kicker of the football team, right? Like, I look back at all these friends I had and I was like, that would have been a great guy to date. Like, what was wrong yes, with you? exactly. Right. So anyway, we have a different eye when we're younger. I think (laughs) I think we have a different eye. (laughs) Totally. So I get introduced. So anyway, long story short, we end up going on a date. I was bored out of my freaking mind. I was like, we're fine as long as you don't open your mouth. And so I learned early if we can't have good conversation. Yeah. I learned early if we cannot have good conversation, I don't care. Wow. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. <laughs> oh, that only is good for so long. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> oh oh gosh. gosh. So, Shelly, what are the qualities that you would like to call in in a man? I'm not going to say looking for because we're not looking. I like a manly man. So, a man that is not afraid of his masculinity. But also a man that that has some balance with that masculinity, right? I don't want to be hit over the head and you know drug like you woman, you come here, right? I don't, I'm I don't just want kidding. That. Um, <laughs> 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 oh gosh! <laughs> but I, I I want a man that that understands masculinity. I want a man that understands that it's okay for me to be stronger or more knowledgeable in one area and for him to to yield to me in that right because I'm going to yield to him like I I have no issue submitting surrendering whatever the word is that women have issues with I have no issue with that right um but I do want I do want a strong leader I want a man that's a strong leader 
right? Because I've had to self lead and self govern for a long time. That doesn't mean that I don't want to govern myself anymore. I just, I have been male and female mom and dad for so long that I would love for a man to come in and just like, Hey, let me be the man. Let me, let me answer questions. Let me make decisions. Let me, you know, and, or someone that says, you know what, how do you feel about that? Have, have that discussion. That's what I'm looking for. So having that and masculine hot, energy. Way. And he needs to be hot too. <laughs> yeah. What did you, wait, what did you say? What was the last thing you said? I said it needs to be hot too. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's a given. I mean, oh, goodness. We I, just want it all, okay? No, yeah. Oh, are we it. asking for too much? We're not asking for too much. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> but I, I hear you, that masculine energy. No, that's super important to me, like having that energy. And, you know, one thing for me, I don't want to say never, like, you know, two of my last three relationships, like they were equivalent or or made slightly more than me at the time, but I've never been in a position where I was provided for if that makes sense, right? Like, I don't need to be the damsel in distress, although that's fun sometimes. Like, you know, I can pay for my lifestyle and stuff, but it would be nice to like not worry about that for a change, which is controversial in today's world, but I don't care. Like, and it's not necessarily that they have to provide for you, but that they have the provider mentality, which, you know, luckily my ex did have, but, you know, there were just, other issues. So I think that would be nice. And just, you know, being able to trust and um, just to feel protected. To me, that's super important. Yeah, for sure. Well, I definitely want, um, are we putting in our orders? Oh, please. Right yep. <laughs> okay. And no 99 cent menu. <laughs> Look, I actually look. It, I'm okay. You need to order I'm okay. This side of the menu. No, look, <laughs> I'm one of those people who could, you know, I love adventure. I love trying new restaurants, and it doesn't matter if it's a 99 cent restaurant or whatever. I love to do it all. So that's the thing: is you can take me high end, you can take me low end. I'm okay with it. The thing I want is I want to be taken care of because I felt like I wasn't taken care of for so long, and I was listening to what you guys were saying and. I have been where I was a stay at home mom and, you know, I didn't have to worry about making an income and those kinds of things I've been taken care of in that way. This is the, I think this is the hard thing in society right now. And that's why I don't want to come across as I don't need a man because I want a man. But if I have to live alone for the rest of my life, I can survive because after my divorce, actually my family was like, are you going to be okay? And I was like, what do you mean? Am I going to be okay? They're like, we don't know if you can even take care of yourself. He had see out everybody, you know, so fooled that I was so weak or whatever. And I was like, you shouldn't be worried about me. You should be worried about him. And, and so I don't want to come across. And so that's something I guess I'm going to have to work on my energy. Like, I don't need you. And if you want to come in my life, you got to be this way. I don't want to come across that way. I really truly want to be like, I'm a whole person and you're a whole person. We're pushing 60. Look, you know, and so let's come together with our our wonderful lives that we have built. And I had to build out of necessity because I'm divorced. And so let's come together. But I do want to be I am very much a you know, I love a good, you know, masculine man. And I want to be taken care of. I don't want to everything to be like done for me. Because I need to do my some of my own things. But yeah, I don't I would love a person to say, yeah, let me take care of that for you. Or this is what I think would help. And let's try it and those kinds of things. And I just didn't have that for a long time. And so those are the things I'm thinking about that I really truly wanted and being taken care of. And I think that's why it comes back to I don't want to ask anyone out. I want someone to ask me out because I want to be taken care of. And I think that's where it's coming from. That's the feeling I'm having. Yeah. So now that I have my order in, everyone call me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I, I, want a, I want a man with like a partnership mentality because I'm looking for yes. a partner. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I love that. Well, and you yes. want to, I want someone to share my life with. And a challenge I had sometimes is I also like to take care of them a little bit. Like I like to be the woman and do certain things for them and like take care of my man. And I want to be taken care of. And, you know, I'm sure it's because they 
well, I guess I'm thinking of one boyfriend in particular. I'm sure it's from past trauma and just like his situation in life. Like he did not want to be taken care of at all. Like he was really sick for two weeks. And I was like, let me bring you soup. Let me bring you. And he was like, I don't want you to come over. I don't want you to see me like this. And I'm like, you're sick. If like, we can't be together in this moment, like what future do we have? So I don't want that situation where my like womanhood I felt was stolen from me. Like this is natural for me to like, yeah, I'm not being your mom. I'm nurturing you in this moment. I'm going to yeah. be a badass running my business the rest of the day. But at the end of the day, I'm going to come in my dress and heels right. and bring you soup. Right. Like, right. That sounds great to me. I mean, I'm that way too. And I feel like, you know, women, we do have a tendency to be nurturers and I, I don't like it. And so that I'm very much like open the door for me and I make sure to go out of my way to thank them because I know there are women who are like, I don't need a man to open my door. And I'm thinking this is just common courtesy, like calm it's down. Nice. You know what I mean? Those kinds of things. But I, I love that idea of making somebody soup. You know, my son is living with me temporarily and I'm like, can I cook dinner? And he's yeah. like, yes. And I'm like, oh, it makes me so happy. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was so funny. I'm going to admit this. When I was younger, I was like, okay, let's date a little bit. And then like, it'd be like fourth or fifth date. I'd be like, oh, I'll cook for you tonight. And then they'd be like, you cook too? And like, they fell in love every time. It was like this formula <laughs> I had. And they'd be like, oh my gosh, you can cook? Like, That's oh part of gosh. her game. See, look at her. It's part uh, of her game. It's part of the game. That's I right. don't have any more game. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's how you get them in. No, it's true because there aren't people who there are, you know, aren't a lot of people. I don't think I don't know if in this generation, though, I see things on, you know, TikTok, you know, whatever people are starting to cook and all that stuff. And it's not as common as say, you know, in our parents generation or something like that. But that's how I was brought up. But my mom and dad both cooked and both took care of everything. So I thought that's what I would have. I love that idea of a partnership. That's what I always wanted. And then the things got awry. And and so I am still wanting that. And I always, the amount of work I've done on myself and I keep doing on myself, kind of pulling out all the junk that's in there. And I think about, okay, I feel like I'm a catch. And so I'm going to keep working on that. And so I hope to attract someone who feels good about themselves and we can come together and partner in this life. I love it. So what would be a fun first date for you? I'm very much a, um, I want to talk to a person. I want to get to know them. So I don't mind if we were, did an outdoor activity as long as it was just walking or some easy hiking or something. But I, I prefer coffee or dinner or something like that where we could talk to each other. Then some people want to go out for drinks and stuff, but I, I just don't want to do that necessarily. I could get something else because I don't want to like, I don't know, because drinking Laura is a different person. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I don't, <laughs> so, sorry. And you know what I mean? It's like, I think your inhibitions go down and I don't know. I'm just not the same person. That's not what I want to portray at first. And so, yeah, that I do enjoy that. I know some people want to go do a fun activity of some sort, but I like to be able to talk to somebody. So that's what I'd like to do. Yeah, you can't talk to them. I had someone take me on a first date to see a movie. I think it was our first date. And we went to see the big short and I was a financial advisor at the time, which is about the 2008 crash. Yes. I was so pissed yeah. off by the end of that movie. Like we walked out and he was like, oh, can I take you to dinner? And I was like, I really need to go home right I'm now. Can you just call me another time? <laughs> I was like, I am like, really? You don't want to talk to me right now. I don't think. Right. <laughs> and then I think he called. I don't know if I like if I did like him or if I just psychologically like linked him with that movie. Cause like when he called, I was like, yeah, I think I'm good. <laughs> Don't worry. So be That's careful funny. what activity you take them on. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. no, I'm the same. I, I want to talk and see if we have chemistry and conversation, right? right. Like for yeah. me, I just like go to dinner, like keep it. So I mean, come on, even if they're horrible, you can survive a dinner or we're adults. Like, I mean, first of all, usually we're dating someone we kind of know at this stage in our life, like you're not just going out on, you know, blind dates, usually. So I yeah, for me, I'm like, I, I'm traditional. I'm like, let's just go enjoy a good dinner. Like I'll have a glass of wine at dinner, but only a glass but with dinner and just have fun. Shelly, how about you? 
Same. Any environment where we're, we're able to converse because that's important to me. I've never understood the whole movie thing because I don't want you, if we're at the movie theater, I don't want you talking to me. That is the quickest way to annoy me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I would, somewhere we can definitely have a conversation. Oh my gosh. I'm totally the same. All right, ladies. Well, I think we should wrap it up. There's so much we could do- go into in this topic, but is there anything we didn't touch on that you would like to share or ask? I, as I said, I'm not the only one asking questions here. Do either of you have questions for the other two of us? I don't know about the other two of you guys, but I'm just wondering if we're missing something, (laughs) if we have been talking for 45 minutes an hour and we're missing something, maybe you guys can tell us (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) because, you know, because maybe we're not looking at this the right way. I mean, we're all in a similar age bracket kind of thing. We know divorce, you know, so we have a different perspective, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm actually thinking this really prompted me to think about doing a conversation on my podcast with my friends who are actively dating because I, it's an interesting topic. It's really interesting. And so I feel if we're missing something, let us know. I love that idea because sorry, Shelly, this episode will be on YouTube. So the easiest way is just go to YouTube and leave us comments. Like I'd love that. (laughs) <laughs> Ask us questions, leave us comments. Who knows? We might have yes. part two. <laughs> Shelly, go ahead. That's right. Okay, so I, I have another question. And this, because someone asked this of me and I was like, what? How do you two feel about friends with benefits? I was like jarred by that. Well, I know it's common, but it's not, It that's not my style. That's not Mine my thing. either. Yeah, it's not my style. Yeah, well, and the reality is how we're built as women is the oxytocin, you know, once you're sexually involved, and then you become attached to them. So I don't think it often works out. I actually, you know, I was not necessarily I mean, I've been single since 2009. So I told you physical touch is number one for my love category. So So I'm not saying I've been approved all my life by any means, but right now I have no desire to have sex with someone that I am not absolutely in a committed relationship. Like I almost, I mean, I have a friend that later in life, like told her boyfriend, we're not having sex till we get married. And I'm close to, I don't know if I would make it. I'm going to be honest and tell him myself, but I could see myself saying that. This is not a religion telling me to be this way, but it's really my relationship with God and that I honor that so much. And I'm very careful who I let energetically, you know, I feel when you're having sex, someone's touching your soul. So I am very protective of my soul. And I think of that a lot differently than I did when I was younger. So, you know, that's why I feel it's going to be interesting. I mean, you know, I've had some, well, that's not true. I I was dating someone, you know, and I don't know how to navigate this new feeling I have, to be honest. And I'm not sure how that's going to go when I start dating again. But yeah, that has changed for me. So the friends with benefits, absolutely no, because at this point in my life, no, I don't think I've ever been friends with benefits, to be honest. I have not either. And I feel like my response is that just seems to me like a recipe for disaster. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that it just... I really think so. Okay, so I have a okay, I have a thing that came up for me. So I want to ask you guys because I know why it triggered me, but it took me a minute to figure it out. I'm on the apps, and I seem to be having some conversations, and then other ones that are just like, "You're so pretty," you know. And it's like, what do I do with that? And so I asked one of my friends, and he goes, "Say thank you." And I said, "Yeah, but it's really bugging me, and I don't know why." Yeah, and so. Yeah, go ahead and tell me what you think. I agree with the thank you only for reciprocity so that you're receiving the comment for yourself, right? Not for them. But if somebody just said you're so pretty and that's all, I'd be like, that's all you got? Like, you know, I mean, (laughs) no game. (laughs) Like, that's all you got? Because... You know, I joke, the last time I did date someone who is the flame I keep being the moth going back to, that I met online, like, I mean, this was back in 2017. (laughs) Yes, it's ridiculous. So in 2017, we first started dating, 
And it was literally like I was online. And I was like, you know what? This isn't for me. I'm getting off. So I literally went on to shut my account down. And he was in, you know, my DM. I guess you'd call it DM now. It wasn't that then. Whatever it was, the message. You're so hip and cool. Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, and so anyway, he had messaged me like reaching out. And I forgot what he said. It was like something, you know, kind of quirky or witty. And I honestly did not give a crap because I was shutting my account down. So I like wrote something <laughs> sassy back to him. Right. And, and like he loved it. Like, and then we ended up dating oh because I was just like, but I mean, he had come at me with something witty and I just like gave him sass back. And like, so that worked. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. At our age, if they told me you're pretty, I'd be like, that's all you got? Are you 12? Like, what's going on? I mean, but for your own good of receiving compliments, I do agree with the saying, oh, thank you so much. Have a great day. That's probably what I'd tell them. Like, thank you yeah, so much. That's you didn't probably pass a good the idea. sniff test. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's probably a good yeah. idea. I should be a little nicer because I have been going like, oh, thank you. So I was trying to why figure out think, why is yeah. this bugging me? Well, I think it's because my ex used to, you know, manipulate our, our relationship with sex. And so I think when he was really attentive that way, like, oh, you're so pretty and beautiful, and blah, blah, blah. And that's what it seemed after some, you know, time thinking about it. I'm like, I think that's what it's triggering in me. And so, okay, so the thing we have to realize is our that, that's not our ex, right? This person talking to me is not my ex. And so I have to really, you know, so I'm still doing work, but there, there's something about it. I guess I do feel like, really, that's all you got? Really? I'm pretty? Wow. What am I going to do with that? So that's how, how we're not I have, feel. We're not going to have a... <laughs> We're not going to have a great conversation. And it's it was a bummer because some of the people I, I was having a conversation with, I felt like, you know, it could have been a scam for all I know, because I know there's those in the apps. But but then just to go to your your pretty, I guess I will say thank you very much. Have a good day. I think I'll, <laughs> I think I'll use that one. I think I will use that one. <laughs> I'm not saying it's right, Bye. but that's what I would do. <laughs> it sounds good to me. It sounds polite enough to not be impolite because I don't want to be impolite, but I also have boundaries, yeah. and, you know, and I also to be like, okay, this is it. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Shelly, how would you answer that one? I would just say thank you. I, I wouldn't even say to have a good day, but then again, okay. that, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I would just say thank you. Sorry. Because that's the, my yeah, smart ass coming out. Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah. that's And then she good. would, and then she would ghost them. That, <laughs> no. No, nope. I said thank you, right? I Just said thank, thank you. you. No, you did. Yeah, thank you, and that means I'm not ghosting you. Now, if he, now, what if he comes back with something witty? What would you do? Oh, well, they can catch well, I would me be after okay that. With that. Yeah. yeah, I would be okay with that because if you're continuing the conversation, you know that would be fine. But not like that's it. And, and how do you respond? Not even. I don't not even a question with it. Just you're so pretty. What am I doing with that? Like, what am I doing with that information? So hmm, yeah, I don't know. Thank you. It could that be was, scammers. But Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> that's right. Oh, yeah. Speaking of scammers, have you had I'm like, God, am I on the radar for the lonely old woman's club? Because I'm having all these <laughs> fake like Facebook men like, you know, try to friend me and you can tell it's fake oh, in two seconds. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm sure they're hitting all women, but I'm like, when the heck did this happen? Like this is a whole yeah. new Is it the thing. ones that are that call you dear right off the bat, dear or babe or whatever? I don't dear. know. It's you just like, know me. <laughs> sometimes they'll just send friend requests. To not say anything. And, you know, I mean, I, I literally know like hundreds, probably thousands. But you, so I never, I, it's always like, do I know this person and I'm forgetting, right? Like, did I meet them somewhere? And so I'll go look at their page, but, you know, it's like stereotypical. Like, it's either like they're a fireman. It's almost like there are these like stereotypes of what women would want, or he's a cowboy, yes. or like, and he's and holding the military. And he, exactly. And he's holding his kids and he's a single dad. Like, it, but yes. it's just these kind of like, and you're like, this isn't real. This is like magazine photos, right? But it, yeah, it's super weird. I got one or two, but lately it's like every, you know, I get one or two a month now. So I guess it's just increasing the scams. Uh, yeah. So I guess that's the lonely old ladies club. I guess I joined it. I'm a target. <laughs> 
I love it. <laughs> All right, ladies. Well, we've been giggling for an hour. Thank you so much for being good sports. And thank you, Laura, for inspiring this episode <laughs> with your memes. So I you hope everybody <laughs> listened and had fun along with us and didn't take us too seriously today. So yeah. here's what we're going to do. We're going to do an update episode in a year. We're going to see okay. where we are. Let's see where we are. <laughs> see where we're at. <laughs> We're going to be like, we, Shelly and I moved to Vegas and we moved in with Laura. We're just being That's the right. old cat we got a, together. We got a big house. Yeah, we got a big house. <laughs> Look. There is a reason why that's happening. I know. I know. It's crazy. All right, ladies. Well, thank you so much. And if you're listening, I hope we made you laugh today. You know, life's too short to take yourself too seriously. So just kind of think, where can you poke some fun at yourself and take things a little less seriously? And how can you show up in love today, especially for yourself? So have a great day and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks again for listening to the podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to hit subscribe so future episodes are automatically downloaded directly to your device. And if you want access to today's show notes, including links to all the resources we mentioned, visit vixengathering.com slash podcast. Thanks again for listening, and I'll catch you next week for another episode of The Vixen Voice.